Imagine this scenario. Yours is a simple, uncomplicated life. You are a happily married man with a home, a car, and a loving family. You work locally. It's a hard job involving lots of physical labor, but it pays the bills. Today, the boss is on your case, threatening to fire you if you're unable to complete your project by morning. This Herculean task is made all the more difficult by your other commitments, especially the need to practice for an upcoming sporting event that you will be competing in alongside your best friend. You cannot let him down. But you must also find a way to complete your work. How can you possibly solve this conundrum? Easy. Call in an alien friend to help dig the trench instantly using off-world technology. Then practice your bowling by hurling yourself through the incredibly dangerous obstacle courses that it now seems to provide, piloting anti-gravity shells whilst trying to pick up gems. Simple. Wait, what? <sighs> that story went a bit off the rails. Much like the game we're talking about today, the Flintstones Bedrock Bowling. As you've hopefully surmised by now, Bedrock Bowling is a weird game. It also has very little to do with, well, bowling. There are no bowling balls, no traditional lanes, and no grouped pin setups. Instead, the aim of the game is to navigate a series of narrow, toboggan-like courses, picking up gems and knocking over individual pins along the way. You get a strike if you've knocked over all of the pins by the time you reach the end of the course. And really, that's about all there is to this game. It's an incredibly simple setup that contains very little depth or replayability. You can choose from one of several characters, such as Pebbles or Dino, but it's really just an aesthetic choice, rather than having any real impact on the gameplay. It's also a single-player experience, so the only real competition while you're playing is your own high school. It's not a particularly interesting game to look at either. There are hints of the Flintstones art style in the characters and colour palette, but it's overshadowed by the bland texture work and poor environmental details. There's also a lot of pop-in, which is really disappointing for a title with such a narrow playfield to have to deal with. Here's a scary thought. This game came out for PC and PlayStation in the year 2000. Think about what other games at the time were doing. The biggest sin is that the game is, well, boring. In spite of the weird premise and poor presentation, you could have at least made a game that provided a weekend's worth of silly fun. The problem is that the game isn't just simple. It's slow. Painfully slow. Running into an obstacle or missing a pin generally happens because you got distracted rather than anything the game itself has done. The cinematics and voice acting occasionally bring a spark of charm to the game, but it's fleeting, and before you know it, you're back to the limbo of slowly sliding through yet another boring trench. There's been a lot of licensed merchandise for the Flintstones over the past half century, but this game has got to be considered one of the worst. A real shame for old Twinkle Toes. Now, Flintstones ready? He delivers the ball, and it is wild. The ball might hit the seven pin. <laughs> and it did. <laughs> no, it's a strike. How about that? Yay! 